too short to be drinking shitty beer. Welcome to another edition of Bands, Bikes and Booze Reviews. This one is going to be a little bit different. It's going to be a video that has been requested by a few subscribers. The latest one being Kev Goes Wandering. Well done, mate. And it's long overdue, so thanks for reminding me to do this because, as I say, I've had a, quite a few subscribers getting in touch with me saying, can you do a video on this? And finally, here we are. The subject in question, of course, is skunky beer. Now, if you've ever drunk beer from a bottle, I'm sure you know what skunky flavours and aromas smell like. You've probably all encountered it at some point, maybe even unwittingly drank beer with that flavour or aroma. I know I certainly have back in the day when I didn't know better. It's something that's ubiquitous with beer nowadays, especially in the UK and especially from macro brewers, but it's not limited to macro brewers. There are smaller brewers who sometimes sell their beer in green or clear bottles, which of course produces skunky flavors and aromas. Now, if you like the taste of skunked beer, that's fine. It's not something I like. It's, in fact, it's something I dislike intensely. And the reason I dislike it intensely because it is so easily avoidable and a lot of brewers will not put their beer into brown bottles for one particular reason which I'll get onto later. But as I say, you've probably encountered it before, unwittingly or knowingly. Some people actually like the taste of skunk beer. I was looking on a uh, American forum the other day and there was quite a few of the uh, contributors and they were saying that they actually liked the taste of skunked Euro lager, which was completely beyond me, but there's no accounting for taste. Anyway, you're not here for that. You wanna know why it happens. Let's discuss why it happens. Okay, so I did a lot of research for this section and it is very, very complicated for someone from a non-scientific background. I'm assuming not many of you do have a good grounding in science um, or chemistry, I should say. It's more chemistry than, than science. Um, if you do, then I apologize, but I was absolutely fucking useless. We had a Polish teacher in school who used to use me as a I don't know, what do they call them, them donkeys that the Mexicans bash up? One of them. Yeah, he was, uh, he was Polish and he would beat the absolute living crap out of me because I just didn't have a clue and yeah, I used to disrupt the class and uh, didn't learn much in chemistry. But I did some research on this and it really was hard going. The bottom line is it produces something called 3-methylbutanethiol, that is the chemical that produces the skunky flavours and aromas. So how is this formed? Well, I'm going to give you a quick rundown here. Beers are unstable to light because of decomposition of isohumulones and reduced isohumulones. Photo decomposition by visible light occurs via one electron oxidation of the beta dricarbonyl chromophore common to isohumulones and reduced isohumulones. Isohumulones and reduced isohumulones furnish radicals on the route to the formation of the light struck flavour. Photooxidization of sulfur containing amino acids by triple excited riboflavin and other flavins delivers S centered radicals. Radicals derived from the isohumulones and reduced isohumulones recombine with S centered radicals to form off flavours. Riboflavin and derivatives function as photogenerated oxidants that are sacrificed, not as true photosynthesizers that are regenerated. Reduced isohumulones are photoreactive, hence their use to brew lightproof beers is questionable. Yes, science! I told you it was complicated, and some might say boring as well. But there you go. Anyway, so we've established the fact that 3-methylbutanethiol three three is the culprit. I'm going to call it 3-MBT from now on because I've, I have trouble pronouncing that word, and 3-MBT is so much easier for me. So it basically involves a chemical chain reaction which causes what's known as radicals to combine with other elements which it's not supposed to and to produce this flavor and aroma. Sulfur is a big part of it as it says. And there's an interesting element to this uh, to do with the light. So if you're aware of the color spectrum, 
If you've ever seen the cover of Dark Side of the Moon by Pink Floyd, you'll have seen light being refracted through a prism. Well, the one we have to watch out for if we're gonna be drinking beer from green or clear bowls is the blue light. And the blue light is what causes this reaction. Now this, this visible light, which is effectively what that is, this visible light is measured in nanometers or NM for short. And anything between 400 and 500 nanometers is what will cause this reaction. And of course, this is blue. Now, everything else within the spectrum, um, I, have no, I have no understanding whether that will cause any of the chain reactions that I've just mentioned, but it's definitely the blue part of that refracted light that will cause that to happen. And there's quite a bit of evidence to prove that pale beer is especially susceptible to this. Not, I'm not saying that dark beer isn't, but pale beer especially is susceptible to it. So I'd imagine if you've ever opened a book, a Corona or something like that, I mean, that's a clear bowl and that's a pale lager inside. And yeah, you can imagine what that's going to smell like. The cynic in me thinks that's half the reason they put a lemon in there, just to disguise that skunky flavour. I mean, it supposedly comes from Mexico, and of course they've got sun there 24-7, 365. <laughs> they haven't, I know. But you can imagine how skunky that beer would be. And I, again, it comes back to people liking the taste of skunky beer. And sometimes, and I will get onto this in a, in a, in a next section, some of the brewers actually rely on that skunkiness to, I wouldn't say enhance the flavour, but to, to contribute to the flavour. And that's, again, that's one, possibly one of the reasons why brewers still sell their beer in clear or brown glasses. But I'll get to get onto that in the next section. So that's really the science behind it. Now, I, as I say, I don't really want to get too bogged down in the science because, I mean, it, it really is, you, there's a whole page when I say a whole page, I mean a whole thesis written about skunky lager, and I really don't want to go into all that because you don't, you're not going to be thinking about that when you're drinking your beer. Suffice to say, now you know why or what the chemical reaction involved in that causes these flavours. So how do you prevent this? Well, I mean, this is pretty basic, really. Pretty obvious, but I'll go through it anyway. The way you can avoid it is to not drink beer out of green bowls. That's the fucking bottom line. Green or clear bottles, I should say. Now, that's easier said than done. And certain beers are only available in green bottles. To an extent. I, I'm just, I've just made that statement and I'm trying to think of beers that are only available in green bottles and not in cans. I was gonna say Beck's, but of course I've drunk Beck's from a can on a number of occasions. Um, I, I can't really think of an English one or a British one, I should say. Uh, there may be European ones that are only available in cans, but I I, I can't really comment on that one because I, I don't have any to hand. I should really research that. But the bottom line is, if you if you really want to go and drink beer that's usually available in green bottles, go for the can. The can is probably the best vessel to or container to consume your beer from, other than a keg or, or from cask. And the reason for that is um, it doesn't let any light in at all. Now, there is a big hang up with cans. And I think this stems from the sort of 70s and the 80s. I certainly remember it when I was drinking in the 80s. You, do, you did get a very metallic type flavor from beer that came from cans. Regardless of what style of beer it was, it did have a metallic taste. And that was normally from the actual can. Now, technology has moved on. And that really isn't a thing now. I don't recall drinking beer out of a can, certainly not recently, certainly not in the past three years, that I could say that the metallic taste was definitely coming from the can. Technology's moved on. I think they coat the inside of the can now, so there is no, uh, no chance of the metallic flavor getting into the beer. But in the 70s, that was a real, and certainly, certainly the 80s as well, that was a real big problem with canned beer. I, I used to shy away from canned beer and would always go for bottles back then, but of course I was probably drinking skunk beer, but there you go. Um, I was drinking Stella as well, so Stella's always done in green bottles, isn't it? So so there you go. Another alternative to, that, to the cans would be certain brewers will distribute their bottles in, in multi-packs, which are basically cardboard, cardboard boxes. 
Now, there's varying degrees of shielding from light in these in these containers, and some of the some of the brewers I know Peroni do one that's completely enclosed. Budvar, I do think do one that's partially enclosed. I think they leave the sides off. And I will say, I want to stress this point, it doesn't matter how much of the bottle is exposed, it only takes a little piece of light to allow that chemical reaction to take place. And it happens very, very quickly as well. Within sort of five minutes, your beer could go skunks. Five or 10 minutes, it's very, very quick in relative terms. So even though you do have most of the, the bottles covered up, I would still avoid beer that is only partially covered up by these protective containers or cardboard containers that brewers put them in. Personally, I think it's a complete and utter waste of time. It's just so much easier to put it into brown bottles. But again, as I mentioned, I will get onto that in the next section. Some people or some brewers don't actually want that, to, um, don't want it to, to be covered up. And I've heard of a case where Newcastle Brown, some of you may remember this, I don't actually remember this, but apparently it was a thing. Newcastle Brown, as you may or may not know, is always in clear bottles now. Back in, I think it was the 80s, possibly, they started putting it into brown brown bottles. And a lot of people complained. They said it wasn't the same beer. And why did they say it was the same beer? wasn't the same beer? It was because it wasn't skunked. And they'd obviously got so used to that skunky flavour from Newcastle Brown, I don't know what they thought it was. Maybe they thought it was an extra type of hop character. But they... Uh, they didn't, um, they didn't like it, and they even done it on draft as well, and they didn't like it on draft. They said it, was, they said it wasn't the same beer, it tasted different. Of course it would do if it wasn't skunked. So again, there's, there's further evidence that some brewers will actually brew their beer in clear containers or green containers. For the flavour, Shepherd Neem do it as well. Now Shepherd Neem are a really, really good brewer. I do like what they do. But if you drink beer from a cask, I know I had one the other day, I had Bishop's Finger the other day, and it was absolutely gorgeous. It was really well kept. It was in a pub in Kent, just down the road from Faversham, and the beer was really, really nice. But if you get it from a bottle, and the bottle's been on a shelf for a while, well, I say a while, it, it could have just been on there for 10 minutes, then you do get kind of a, a skunky flavour. To be honest, and I will say this with through gritted teeth, in ales, in top fermented ales, the flavour isn't pr as pronounced. I don't know why that is. Maybe it's because lager is, well, certainly macro brewed lager is, is quite bland. And anything like skunk, skunkiness or light struck or 3 MBT, as I should call it by its, its correct terminology, uh, that is quite a strong flavour. It's probably the strongest flavour you will ever get in beer. And that will, that will I wouldn't say in, dominate it, but you can. You can definitely taste it in, in beer that's been light struck. But in, in dark beers and top ale, top fermented ales, certainly English ales, it's there, yes, but it's not as prevalent, if, if you know what I mean. Just drink a bottle of Spitfire or drink a bottle of, drink any Shepherd Neen beer, to be honest, and you will get that. It's not as pronounced and it's not as bad. It's, it's not as foul tasting, if you know what I mean. But again, Shepherd Neen are are a good brewer their beer is good to start off with but it doesn't matter how good a brewer you are if if your beer gets light struck then forget it you're not going to get anybody tasting them really good flavors which again comes back to my point about Budvar. Budvar go to a lot of trouble of exporting their beer and not allowing anybody quite rightly so to brew it under license in any other country so every Budvar that you drink comes from the czech republic yet they insist on putting it into green bottles, and that boils my piss. I don't want to go into a rent. Let's calm it down. Suffice to say, green bottles, clear bottles, avoid them. Brown bottles will give you, and it's been measured, four times as much protection as green or clear bottles. Clear bottles offer something stupid like 5% protection or sort of hardly anything, and I think green offers about 20% protection from the light, but for the, the brown bottles certainly do give you a lot more protection. Protection. Now there is a glass manufacturer in the United States called Owens, Illinois. I don't know whether you've heard of them. They're quite a big company. They've been going years, I think since the last century. They were currently, this was in 2011, they were developing a black glass which would stop beer 
from going skunky and it would give 100% protection just like a can which kind of defeats the object really because if you're trying to compete with a can cans are much easier much quicker and much cheaper to produce than these kind of bottles and I'd imagine if you sold your beer in these kind of bottles then your the price of your beer is going to be a bit more expensive when you could quite easily just sell it in a can so I'm not sure what's going on with Owens Illinois there but that's what they're doing. Now, there's a little footnote to this. You may have heard me talking recently in videos when I've been talking about, or <laughs> talking, when I've been ranting about light struck beer. There has been, and I did mention this in the science part, there has been development going on with a hop extract that will stop this chemical reaction or this chain reaction from taking place that produces 3MBT. The pioneers of this are Miller, Miller Coors. And Miller Coors have come up with this hop extract which they've put into their beers. And they've put into the Miller beers that are in clear clear glasses, so or clear glasses, clear bottles. So if you buy some, some of this Miller beer, Miller Light or whatever, then, or the, the, the ice beers that they do, Miller, you probably won't get skunky beer. And the reason for that is this hop extract is in there that doesn't doesn't allow that, that chemical reaction to take place. But point I want to make about that is if it was such a big thing and if it was so revolutionary, why aren't other brewers using it? And my take on that is it's not really a good hop. I would bet you a pound to a bucket of shit that no German brewer is ever going to entertain the idea of putting that kind of hop extract into beer and foregoing some really good noble hops or hops that have been grown where the hops are renowned and used in Germany throughout. So I wouldn't get too excited about this hop extract that Miller are using. It's, it hasn't caught on and I think Miller are the only ones that are using it. There has been some research that would suggest that there could potentially be an element in the malt as well that causes this chain reaction. It's not been proven. Um, it's still an unknown quantity at the moment. I don't know whether research is going on. I imagine there are some, some boffins somewhere, some chemists that are, some food scientists or whatever you want to call them, that are researching this. But it, it has been touted that there could potentially be something there. So it's just something to bear in mind when you do get light struck flavors in beer 99.99999 times out of 100 that is going to be the hops but there is always the potential for a bit to be the malt apparently that hasn't yet been proven and while i'm on that subject um, there are certain off flavors you get in beer and certain people attribute it, attribute that to being light struck or skunky or whatever and they are in fact incorrect so whenever you do get a a strange smell from the beer don't automatically assume that it's light struck or 3 mbt or or skunked or whatever it could be some other off flavor that's in there if you want to find out what the other off flavors are i do mention um light struck beer in there as well i've got a video of off flavors that you find in beer so check that out on the channel but yeah just don't automatically assume that any bad flavor or bad aroma that you get from beer is going to be 3 mbt because it may not be Right, in the previous sections I've touched on the exasperating phenomenon that is brewers putting beer into their clear and green bottles and selling it to the general public. Why do they do that? My initial take was that any good brewer or head brewer or brewmaster, whatever you want to call them, would be absolutely aghast at the thought of putting their beers into green bottles or clear bottles and selling it to the general public because any brewer worth their salt knows what's going to happen when you do that. But I would wager that every time they've been overruled by the marketing department because the marketing department don't really care about the quality of the product. Well, I say that when I say they, they don't really care about the quality of the product, they, they obviously do but they care more about the branding. And the branding to them is everything. And, and sales are king. You ask any businessman, regardless of what industry they're in, if they're selling a product, sales are king. And anything that they think will 
market that product better or will improve the branding than they will do and they will sacrifice other factors to get these sales. Now, I do have a little bit of proof on that one because I did read an article from a contributor in the research for doing this video and they actually did have a conversation with the head of marketing for Miller, believe it or not. Um, it was a woman and uh, he he knows about beer, he knows about you know what 3MBT is and all that and he basically pulled her up and said look why the hell are you selling your beer in clear bottles you know that it gives them gives your beer a bad flavor and that's what you're selling to the general public and her argument was um, beer in clear bottles is more appealing and again he hammered home the point about uh, the 3 MBT in, in beer giving bad flavors and bad aromas and yeah, she, she reiterated the point that beer in clear bottles um, is actually very appealing, especially to women who are buying beer, which, you know, I, I, I really, I just never even thought about that. I have no rebuttal or argument. It probably is. I mean, if they've researched it, I, I have no interest in marketing whatsoever. I have an aversion to marketing, so I've not really dis discovered whether women prefer alcoholic beverages in in clear bottles um, that would that would probably explain the clear bottles because a lot of wine is available in clear bottles and wine you know my views on fucking wine no 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 not this fucking time no fucking way no fucking way no fucking way no fucking way yeah they can they can sell that in green in green and clear bottles because there's no hops in there so they're not going to react are they but I don't buy it really to be honest I, I just think that if it does appeal to to people who are buying beer in clear bottles then without wanting to sound like a beer snob I, I don't think they really know much about beer and that would that would explain I can understand the marketing for for clear bottles but for green bottles that is just pure pure vanity brewers like Heineken and Carlsberg I mean their their logos are green they sell their beer in green bottles I don't really see them changing it, it, it the, the marketing people would have a fit if it was even suggested and it, it costs nothing it really doesn't so the cost factor isn't well it's not a factor to be honest because the cost between producing brown bottles and beer bottles is is non-existent apparently that's what i've been told um, if anybody wants to correct me on any of the information that i've put forward in this video then please do i'm all ears and i'm willing to be proved wrong on anything that I've given you for information in this video. So there you go, that is a brief discussion on 3-MBT or 3-methylbutanethiol, if I get my tongue around that one, 3-MBT, light struck beer or skunky beer, whatever you wanna call it. Now, as I said before in the last section, just avoid beer in clear or green bottles if you absolutely can't avoid it or your favorite brew is in a green bottle or a, a clear bottle then i would question the taste i mean i don't even have to ask you to do this test you probably know it for yourself if for example your favorite beer is in a green bottle and you try that same beer on cask keg whatever it may be then it's going to taste different and if you're going to argue that it tastes exactly the same then I will rebut you with science because science doesn't care about your feelings. So that's it. That's all you need to know about light struck beer. As I mentioned, if you have any comments, if you have any suggestions, put them in there in the section below. If you want to subscribe, subscribe. If you don't want to subscribe, don't subscribe. You're under no obligation. You're more than welcome to just come along, watch the videos, and then toddle off on your merry way. So there you go. And remember, beer is working class champagne. What the fuck is going on? Hey? What's going on? Oh, you bastard.